So I guess I owe Navy Nexus an apology because he's the one who invented this build and he is so much smarter than me and I was kind of bashing it because it's so um, sensitive because it works off of a glitch in the game but now my build that competed with it is gone so I'm going back to it. This falling sand method works really really well as long as you follow the rules. Hey guys, Profe Pablo here, Spanish teacher turned Minecraft engineer. Here I am uh, in a world doing some crazy stuff, but I uh, mainly came to show you this. Um, and that is that here um, is a build that I made a while ago, and this kind of exploited a zero tick property of kelp, where water would be placed and moved away, and the kelp would grow fast and harvest it quickly. Now it wasn't good as the falling sand method, it wasn't as fast, but it was super stable and it would never break. Well, with the new update guys, I hate to say it, it broke. Um, <laughs> this thing was going for like a couple hours and uh, it only gave me 19 pieces of kelp, which is insanely ridiculous. So this build is broken, I'm so sorry. Uh, but what we are going to do today is revisit zero tick and I'm going to give you some rules on how to make it work better and we are going to make a bone meal farm because with bone meal we can make anything so as long as we have bone meal we're good to go now the first thing you'll want to do is find a semi flat area and we need to put this thing in a chunk that's the first thing that breaks zero tick farms are especially with the falling sand method is if they cross a chunk border they're not going to work so to find a chunk it's not that hard uh, all you have to do is come down, pick any coordinate you want. So I want in this area where I build, that's where I want it. So I'm going to take the first number, 2477, and I'm going to divide that. So I have a calculator here, and you won't be able to see it on your screen. That's okay. 2477 divided by 16. That's your magic number equals 154.8. So what I'm going to do is take 154, or I can raise it to 155, as long as it's a whole number, and you multiply that by 16. So 2480 is where one of my borders is gonna be. So let me go back here, 2.80, right where I'm standing. And I'm going to be using poppies, uh, to mark this because for some strange reason I have a crazy amount of poppies in my world Okay, uh, so I have that number is um, 2480 so as long as I can stay on that line that is going to be a chunk border I'm just gonna plant a few poppies there and then I need to find the next one. So I'm standing on 102. I'm going to take 102, divide that by 16, and I get 6.3. So I'm going to take the number six, which is the nearest whole number, and multiply that by 16. You never knew you'd be doing math here, right? So 96, so that I need to go to 96, which is this way, right here. So this, 96 is my other chunk border. So if you can connect the two, you can make a cross. And here are four different quadrants. So you just pick a quadrant that works best for you. Um, it looks like this one is going to work the best for me. And if you want to go ahead and fill out the complete chunk, you start at the corner, go over one and start counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So that's one side, and then you could do it on this side too. One, two, three, and go ahead and do that on all sides. Okay, so where the red poppies are, that is my chunk, and my build needs to stay inside of this chunk border. So I'm just gonna clear off the land a little bit, and I'll meet back with you guys in just a second. Okay, now that my land is perfectly flat, we are going to make this zero tick farm. 
So to make this, we are going to take a block of our choice and build um, inside of the border. And as long as our redstone isn't crossing the border, we should be fine. So I'm gonna come three blocks this way, one this way, and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now you can make this as long as you want, as long as you don't cross a chunk of border. And then I'm going to skip a block here and make a row of blocks there, the same length. Then I'm going to grab sticky pistons. So I'm going to place them here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten. Then I'm going to grab sand and place sand all along this row. Then I'm going to take three blocks, one, two, three, and actually four, one more right there, and then run blocks all behind this row of pistons. I'm going to take my redstone, run it all along the back like that, run a repeater going into this block, put redstone down here, put a redstone torch there that starts the clock, and then put a lever here. Then I'm going to take some sand, place it here, 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 all the way on each one of these pistons. Then one more row of sand on that. I'm gonna take some more blocks, cover this up, cover this up, then come to the back of the build, and do the same thing back here. Put a row here, the row here, and then build one more row up like that. Now on this back row, I'm going to put normal pistons. And then I'm gonna to come to the sides and kind of build some walls here just to contain the sand a little bit. And I need to build those walls as high as the pistons. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Okay, I actually didn't need this here. I just needed it to cover that much. There we go. Now up here on top, I'm going to place some blocks there, bring them all the way across, and then some blocks here, bring this all the way across. Then I'm going to take stairs and place them like this. So the stairs are upside down, just like that. And over here, I'm going to take a block, place it here, take a torch, place it there. Notice the torch turns off. Take a block, place it there. Take another torch, place it here. And then I'm going to take a block, place it there. Take one more torch, place it there, should turn off. And then make a row here with redstone. Now you want three torches involved because it has something to do with the timing of the pistons allowing the kelp to grow. Now what I'm going to do here seems a little strange at first but stay with me. I'm going to take some chests and place them right below this block here. So I'm going to place one there I'm going to make it a double chest facing out. I'm going to do that in front of every single piston. Okay, and then down here, I'm going to place, skip a block where the sand is and place composters all the way along here, underneath each one of these chests. Then I'm gonna come here, break a block here, break two blocks down here, and I'm going to carve out all the blocks going two down underneath the composters. Ooh, we ran into a little underwater cave here. Don't need to mess with that right now. It's over here, right on my chunk border for me. Might not be for you. I'm going to take a double chest, place it right here, which is one block below these composters. Now it's time for hoppers, and you will need a lot of hoppers for this build. So if you don't have an iron farm, get one. All right. We're gonna place one going into the chest and two going into the chest and we're gonna do that all the way back going under each one of the composters. Then you have to take a hopper and place one on top of each one of these composters like this. And 
Then on top of these chests, place another hopper going in to the top of the chest. Now, I think this makes this go just a little faster, but if you don't have enough hoppers, it'll work fine like this. But if you want to, instead of using blocks here, place a hopper going into this hopper. It just seems to catch the kelp a little quicker that way. I can do that because in my worlds I have a lot of iron, and that may or may not be the same reason that I have a lot of poppies. Okay, then I'm going to take last panes, run it along here, just like that. Now we're almost ready. Take a water bucket, place one there, 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 and there. Um, if you don't have that much water near you, you should hopefully already know this trick. Infinite water source, four blocks like that. Boom, boom, infinite water. Okay, now I'm going to take kelp and plant it right on top of the sand, like that. And I have seen where people put buttons here. Um, I don't really think that makes a difference. Uh, so we're going to go without this time. Now, everything seems to be hooked up, ready, ready to go. We are inside of our chunk. Let's test it out. Okay, yes, it is working crazy amounts of kelp. Look at all that. We can come over here to the end and look at how fast our bone meal is filling up. This is in real time, I'm not speeding up the video. So while this thing is working for just a minute, let me explain to you some rules. When you are near this, do not go too far outside of the chunk or else it will break. Uh, do not go into a portal or else it will break. Do not turn off the game without turning it off or else it will break. So uh, it, to service this thing, let's say that it does happen to break. Let me turn it off just for a second. Let's say that it does happen to break. What you can do is come over here, break this block and this block, because what will happen is sand will fall down into here, causing it to stop working. Carve one block down, all the way down, and that way you can get down here and break all of the sand that has fallen through. Then you will need to come back up here to the top. Um, you can jump here on the glass. It's really not that hard. You can throw sand on the back wall to replace the sand. It'll fall down in its place. And then you replace the kelp. Uh, but as long as you stay inside the chunk border, you should be fine. Unless you're playing on realms or server, the lag might be too much for this. Again, this works off of a glitch in the game and Mojang will probably patch this eventually. But right now, let's enjoy it while we can. Let's get one more look at this chest. Yeah, we already have a stack and it has been no time at all. And again, look at how fast it's filling up. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching.